Hi there, Biology 400 students. Uh, this is Mr. Workman, and this is going to be screencast session four for the cellular basis of life unit. Let's get started right away. Make sure you have your notes uh, ready, and uh, page, uh, page 51 in the current unit booklet will be helpful to you as we get going here. Um, all right, let's get to it. Screencast session four. As you can see, um, this uh, diagram here is the one that shows you the two main forms of cells that we are going to be discussing in this unit. On the left is prokaryotic cells and on the right eukaryotic cell. And of course you uh, have seen screencast session three wherein uh, Mr. Gales delineated the differences and the similarities between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And certainly you should have your Venn diagram um, on page 47 of the current unit booklet uh, filled in with uh, how um, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells contrast and how they compare. That is, how they are different and how they are the same. For this screencast session, what you should be able to uh, understand or learn or do is uh, first and foremost describe prokaryotic cells uh, in general. Number two, learning target there is uh, identify two kingdoms that we call, um, and this is a classification scheme. Kingdoms are very broad categories of classification, uh, classifying organisms. There are two kingdoms of prokaryotic or organisms that you're going to know what they are. And of course, targets three and four, um, these are those kingdoms, um, archaea bacteria and eubacteria. Uh, and you're going to need to be able to describe the characteristics of the uh, types of organisms within those kingdoms. And basically, we're going to want you to know uh, well enough what a prokaryotic cell is. Uh, you need to know and understand it well enough so that you can draw uh, an example of one, uh, a simple diagram that would be. We're going to start here with this movie. So sit back, relax, and enjoy for a moment. The simplest cells are called prokaryotes. These single-celled microorganisms are believed to be the earliest form of life on the planet. They are so small they can only be seen under a microscope. Bacteria, which are prokaryotic cells, proliferate in oceans, soil, swamps, and inside other organisms. They've been found under glaciers and inside volcanoes. In fact, there are millions of bacteria inside our bodies. Fully one half of the Earth's living material consists of these single-celled microorganisms. Prokaryotic cells are tiny. About a hundred lined up in a row would be about the thickness of a page. But they're highly successful organisms because they can reproduce very quickly, adapt, and survive when their environment changes. Prokaryotic cells have a relatively simple structure. They are bounded, like all cells, with a double-layered cell membrane, which encloses the cytoplasm. A feature that characterizes them is that they do not have a membrane-enclosed nucleus, but they have a nucleoid region floating in the cytoplasm that contains the loop of DNA. The DNA is the genetic information that governs the cell by providing the instructions for all of its activities. The biochemical activities in these cells depend on molecules finding the right partners for reactions to take place. When the cell is very small, this can happen because molecules are in a constant state of movement within the cytoplasm. The molecules and enzymes float around until they find each other. The cytoplasm is a watery gel that contains about one billion molecules of sugars, amino acids, and other dissolved chemicals. Small bead-like structures called ribosomes float in the cytoplasm. They produce enzymes and other proteins required by the cell by translating the information from the DNA. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was your quick introductory video. Um, so let's talk about generalities of prokaryotes right now. Um, first of all, these are your two major kingdoms that prokaryotes can be grouped into, archaea bacteria and eubacteria. As you heard from the video, it's thought that prokaryotic 
uh, organisms are the first uh, organisms to have existed on our planet. Um, and it's thought that um, the prokaryotes first appeared uh, on our planet about three and a half billion years ago. The planet itself is about five billion years old, according to uh, geological evidence that we have. So it's important to understand that for about one and a half billion years, as far as we understand, uh, there was no life. But the prokaryotes, being as simple as they are, are thought to be the ones that appeared first. Um, Prokaryotes, just so you understand, are unicellular organisms. That means the entire organism is composed of one cell. And the, the big thing that you need to know about differentiates prokaryotes from all uh, other complex forms of cell is that there is no defined nucleus. There's no membrane-bound structure that houses or protects nucleic acid uh, genetic information. There are three main forms of prokaryotes. Uh, spherical, these are the, the ball-shaped um, uh, prokaryotic cells that exist, we call um, those cossi um, and uh, rod-shaped um, bacteria. They look kind of look like uh, little pill tablets. Their shapes is, are remarkably similar to those. Uh, those are the bacilli um, uh, group of prokaryotes. And then we have these spiral-shaped bacteria. Um, uh, and these are the three main families of uh, bacterial or prokaryotic organisms that we have. When we think about archaea bacteria, um, they are there are both autotrophic and heterotrophic organisms, and the interesting thing about archaea bacteria um, is that their cell walls have no um, particular molecule called peptidoglycan, whereas in eubacteria we do see that or that uh, peptidoglycan molecule in the cell wall. If you look at the first part of this term, archaea, that that means like archaeology ancient. Um, archaea bacteria are the prokaryotes that are first to have, uh, that are thought to have first, first evolved. They are the ancient bacteria. And the thing that's really, really interesting about archaea bacteria is that they can live in extremely extreme uh, um, odd environments, such as uh, at the bottom of oceans in geothermal vents. Now, this is very, very, very hot and very, very high pressure uh, condition. And it's just it's sort of odd that an organism could survive that type of um, environment, but these archaea bacteria can. Um, this word, thermoacidophile, uh, means that, you know, thermo means heat and acid means acid. And what this essentially means is that archaea love, they have a philia for heat and acid. Archaea bacteria actually survive very well in geothermal vents, uh, not only at the bottom of the ocean, but you know, kind of like in geysers uh, and the travertine um, hot acidic pools that um, surround geysers, like uh, the famous one old, uh, old, um, at um, Yellowstone Park, Old Faithful, it's called, I was trying to say, I'll come up with. Eubacteria, on the other hand, um, we do have autotrophic and heterotrophic species. Of course, autotrophic means they feed themselves. Uh, in many instances, they photosynthesize. And then heterotrophic, that means they need to gain their nutrient material from outside sources. The main distinction here is that these bacteria um, have peptidoglycan in their cell walls. Um, and they're what we refer to as true bacteria. Um, e. coli, that's a type of a bacteria that um, often get us sick if we um, have food poisoning. And if you've ever had strep throat, Streptococcus, this is the type of bacteria that infects your throat if you have strep throat. Um, the interesting thing about this peptidoglycan structure in cell walls is that um, antibiotic drugs actually attack the synthesis of this molecule or attack the process of the synthesis of peptidoglycan. Because your cells, my cells, we don't have cell walls in our cells and we also don't have peptidoglycan um, necessary for the construction of our own cells if we take uh, a drug that interferes with the production of peptidoglycan, it doesn't harm us, but it does harm uh, the replication process of bacteria. So antibiotics are drugs that interfere with bacterial replication, um, but doesn't really harm our cells because the antibiotic drugs generally target this particular molecule, peptidoglycan. As we look at the general schematic features of uh, this diagram, uh, this is the cartoonish schematic diagram. And over here, this is an actual uh, transmission electron micrograph image. 
Um, it's one thing that you do need, do need to know for your test in this unit is you're going to be identifying uh, structures in both schematic diagrams as well as transmission electron micrographs. So get to know your diagrams well. This, this diagram is found on page 51 in your unit booklet. Let's just go through very quickly what these structures are and what they do. These pili structures are adhesive structures. Think of it kind of like uh, Velcro, so to speak. Uh, pili allow bacteria to adhere and stick to surfaces like your kitchen countertop. If you don't wash it, bacteria thrive on that kitchen countertop and uh, you know, bacteria can stick to your fingers, it can stick to your skin, it can stick to all sorts of surfaces. So uh, these pili structures allow them to do so. This nucleoid region, if we're thinking about that, that's just this, it's not a nucleus, it's, it's a nucleoid region. Well, it, this is where the genetic material is for the cell. Uh, these cells do have DNA, and it's not protected by any membrane-bound bound structure. There is no nucleus. It's ju it, we just have this mass of DNA in the central region of the cell. Prokaryotic cells, bacteria, do have ribosomes. These are organelles that synthesize proteins. Um, and the plasma membrane, of course, this is a phospholipid bilayer structure that surrounds the cell itself. But of course, outside the plasma membrane, we have this cell wall. That's the structure that has peptidoglycan molecules in it. And then even outside of that, we have this capsule structure, which is another protective structure that allows bacteria to survive, in some instances, in very dry environments and, you know, lets them live outside of a body, so to speak. You know, the body of the cell is the body of the organism, and this capsule structure helps the organism survive. Flagella are not always seen on prokaryotic cells, but sometimes they are. Flagella are uh, mobility structures. This allows the uh, cell to actually move through its environment if it were in an aqueous or a watery environment. So there you go. Those are the main features of prokaryotic cells. Um, hopefully these five targets you're well acquainted with now. You need to be able to describe the general structures uh, or the general organization of prokaryotic cells. You need to know the two kingdoms of prokaryotic organisms. Those are the archaea and the eubacteria. And then you need to know the features uh, and structures of a prokaryotic cell well enough so that you could draw or make your own diagram of a prokaryotic cell on your own. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll see you next time.